Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel and Planet X News. Today we're going to be going over some information that was submitted by our physicist today. And the issue is the coronal holes on the sun. Now if you've been listening to my channel for some time, you know that I go into the information provided by the SDO pertaining to all of these coronal holes that have been appearing on our sun for more than 18 months now on a regular basis. I had a discussion with our physicist pertaining to the reasons why these coronal holes are constantly appearing on our sun. We've gone on and researched this information and she has submitted this report. The title of the report is, Why Does the Sun Have So Many Coronal Holes? A Physicist's Thoughts, March 30th, 2017. Now it states in figure one, below shows an illustration of a coronal hole and a plasma loop on the sun. The sun's magnetic field lines usually form loops close to the sun and the sun's plasma, which is made up of mostly ionized hydrogen, with some other particles like ionized helium and even some ionized iron flow between these looping field lines thus forming plasma loops now ladies and gentlemen if you've never seen these plasma loops on the sun they are absolutely spectacular what i'm going to do real quick is i'm going to show you what these plasma loops look like and this is going to be just some nasa footage and this is from the SDO. I'm going to go ahead and play this for you so you can see some of the activity on the sun. Now, a lot of this activity is normal to our star. But let's take a look at these plasma loops. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up for you because it is absolutely spectacular to watch. Now, what you're seeing is what she is referring to in her report these very large plasma loops as they extrude from the sun. Very spectacular to watch. Now there's a lot to understand pertaining to what is occurring on the sun. And as you can see, these are absolutely spectacular. Here you can see the earth to scale pertaining to the size of the sun and these plasma loops. Now we're going to go ahead and get directly back to the report. Now this is just showing you the rendition of the sun and normal solar winds formed by particles flowing from other regions in the sun's corona. Now basically what happens, the sun is interacting with another object. Therefore, these large coronal holes will start to open up. We're going to go ahead and move down here a little further. It states that figure one illustration of different particle fluxes coming off of the sun. When the field lines, well, let me blow this up. When the field lines make a loop, plasma flows between these magnetic field lines, thus forming a plasma loop, what we just watched in that video from NASA and the SDO. The particle flux from the coronal hole is caused by particles flowing along the magnetic field lines in the coronal hole. This particle flux is faster than the normal particle flux generated by the sun and gives rise to the fast solar wind. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I talk about this solar wind just about every single day now because our planet is being blasted continuously with these solar winds. As the report goes on here, it states that the solar winds which originate in coronal holes can have speeds of more than 750 kilometers per second or 1.7 million miles per hour. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last week we saw a coronal hole produce solar winds at 2.5 million miles per hour. That is absolutely extreme. 
And we're going to go ahead and move further down here. And we're going to start talking about some of the magnetics and the magnetic field lines of the sun. Now it states that magnetic field lines always form a closed loop as shown in figure two below. So even though the magnetic field lines coming through a coronal hole are drawn as if they are open, they cannot really be open. They have to close and form a loop somewhere. The loop may close very far away from the sun, but it has to close somewhere. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're getting at here in this information, and I know some of this may be confusing to all of you, but what we're basically getting at is we're trying to make a connection between what is occurring on the sun, what is creating all of these coronal holes. When these coronal holes are opening up on the sun, it is creating the solar winds. When the solar winds impact the earth, and once again, these are not real winds as I have mentioned before, like you would be standing outside and the wind blowing through your hair. This is a mag this is a massive magnitude of particles flowing directly from the sun and impacting our magnetosphere and impacting our earth. These particles have the ability to make their way all the way through the earth's crust and all the way through to the core, therefore heating up the core and creating substantial earthquakes and volcanic activity. Now, something else that we're going to be investigating within the next 48 hours is the effect of this solar wind on the human mind and the human body. And I've been getting emails constantly pertaining to how people are feeling within their own minds and things that are occurring with their bodies. And it's very, very interesting. And the report that we're going to be coming out with, I would not miss this. Now, anyways, let's get right back to this. We're showing a diagram here of the sun and our brown dwarf star, meaning that this brown dwarf star is directly attracted to our sun. They have basically made a portal connection with each other. And this portal connection is causing these coronal holes to open up on the sun, therefore exposing the earth to the solar winds, the radiation, and the influx of these particles. It basically states here that figure three, illustration of the magnetic field connection between the sun and another star. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen this over and over and over again. I have the current SDO footage up on my screen right now. This is the 48 hour loop provided by the SDO. Again, something very weird happening with the sun. This is the large coronal hole that you see here that just passed our planet. Now, once again, coming from the back side of the sun as we see it, another coronal hole opening up. You can see a weakened area in the corona right here. This is probably going to connect with what you're looking at down here. Now, our physicist goes into detail about what has been occurring below the sun. We've had a very large coronal hole in the southern region of the sun for quite some time. It has basically not filled in. I've been monitoring this now for almost a year, and this large coronal hole has been sustained at this region of the sun. What we're coming up with, as far as the research goes, there has to be something below the sun, below the sun's ecliptic, that is causing these large coronal holes at the base of the sun. We cannot see behind the sun at this time. The craft 
the satellite that was behind the sun that was monitoring this activity supposedly was damaged and taken down by NASA. We believe that to be completely false because if we had a view behind the sun, we would be able to see what is occurring over in this region and this is where the coronal holes roll around right into our view. And so you can see very clearly how this coronal hole is coming from the left as the sun rotates. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no doubt something is interacting with our sun and it is causing damage to our sun. There is absolutely no doubt. Now, taking a look at this footage, you're going to see the sun jolt again. Watch carefully. Now, that could be the possibility of a camera adjustment with the SDO, or we're looking at actual time-lapsed footage of the sun being jolted by the energy from this brown dwarf. Now, there will be people that will say, look, you're absolutely crazy. This is not happening. Okay, well, if that is the fact, and that is your statement, then you prove to me what is causing the massive deep coronal holes on the sun. So far, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't had anyone come with credible information pertaining to what is happening on our sun. Why are these coronal holes opening up constantly? It seems like every single week since the middle of 2016, we have this problem. Now, we're going to go ahead and go into the rest of this report. We're going to go into figure three. It states that figure three above shows a possible way in which the magnetic field lines coming off the sun may connect to another star in the solar system. Particles flow between the field lines so that the two stars exchange particles. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, this is like taking your lamp or your light and plugging it into the wall socket. It's making a connection. It states that the sun loses particles at a fast rate and a coronal hole appears where the sun's magnetic field lines flow outward toward the other star. So basically, again, ladies and gentlemen, the sun has made this portal connection with the brown dwarf. We feel that the brown dwarf has situated itself below the sun. We also feel that there is a very high possibility that there are other objects within the inner solar system very close to the sun and they are actually making their own portal connections with the sun, therefore weakening the sun and possibly causing the sun to go dark. That may be the reason why the theory of these sun simulators being in our atmosphere and in the solar system very close to the earth producing this very weird fake sunlight. At points in time, it almost looks like you're in a studio under studio lights. When you're photographing the sun, it has very weird shapes. Sometimes it's shaped like a diamond. Sometimes it's shaped like a square. Sometimes it's perfectly circular. Sometimes it's rectangular, but it looks like a headlight in the sky. Now, in all my years, I've never seen anything like this, but over the period of the last 16 months, 17 months, 18 months, this is what is being seen around the world, just not by my eyes, but by millions of people around the planet. Now, we can see this is a SDO image from 2015 and then going into 2017. Okay, you can see how nice and milky white the corona is on the sun. However, here is the beginnings of this coronal hole at the base of the sun. Taking a look at this coronal hole, very, very large, but you can see how dim the corona 
has become very, very dim. The comparison, you can see it with your own eyes. Let's move further down in this, this report. Now, a few weeks ago, myself and Chris Potter were analyzing some images from the Stereo Ahead Core 2. And as we were talking, we were analyzing this piece of footage and we saw a small comet come out of nowhere and it seemed to impact the sun. At the time we were watching this footage, there was a very large, well, we'd just call it a shadow at the base of the sun. Whenever we were viewing this footage and watching it, we saw the comet come in and impact. Now, the little white circle that you see here in the middle of the occulter, that is the actual diameter and size of the sun. Not the big black circle, the small white one in the middle. When this comet came in, it impacted way below where the white circle is. There was a huge interaction with the sun. It also caused a reaction with the camera system of the stereo satellite that images the sun. Immediately, this very large round circle shadow at the base of the sun disappeared and then there was a very large illuminated circle at the base of the occulter. Now, we're just, you know, talking in theory here because we don't have 100% evidence that this was an impact into the brown dwarf, not the sun. However, this was instantaneous. We watched it over and over and over again, coming up with the same results. That comet came out of nowhere and it impacted something below the sun where this shadow was located. Within seconds of the impact, this illuminated object appeared right below the occulter. The black occulter is blocking our vision on what was impacted. The comet did not come out of the other side. It disappeared right here. The impact caused the camera to go haywire, probably from the influx of particles streaming from the sun and the impact. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going by our observations and what we are seeing. Now, getting into this illustration on figure seven, the illustration of the possible position of a brown dwarf star located below the sun. Both objects have the same speed and direction of motion with respect to the galaxy, meaning they're moving in this direction. They're basically attached with a magnetic portal connection. And that is exactly what we are seeing in some photographs that are being taken by people around the world. This photograph, for instance, this photograph came in by one of our subscribers. I've had this photograph for a while now, and you can see very clearly this is in a negative image. Now, we're not too sure about the darkened objects right here. However, they could be uh, just part of the lens flaring, but I, I don't see I don't see lens flaring in this negative photograph. And what I do see is I do see an object that is appearing right below the sun. Here's your sun up here. This is possibly the brown dwarf that we're looking at. Remember, these brown dwarf stars do not emit light. If this object was emitting light, it would appear black, like you're seeing here and here. The possibilities of these being lens flares or anomalies in the camera, it's possible. But this object, this object right here is of concern, big concern, 
because once again, we're seeing these objects in photographs and they're coming in quite frequently. Now this photograph is from the LASCO SOHO uh, Space Telescopes monitoring the sun. This came in some time ago. I'm not sure of the actual date. It might have been a few years ago. But as you can see, what is this object? Perfectly spherical. You can see, we'll just zoom in here. You can see plasma discharges coming from this object. It's not a lens flare, but what is it? But it's positioning directly below the sun, directly below it. And once again, you know, we have a lot of these photographs. When people are taking these photographs of what appears to be two suns in the sky, we're getting these photographs from all over the world. I believe this photograph is coming from the country of Kuwait. And this was sent in to me. And again, if you look at the position of the illuminated object, it is directly below the sun at about the five o'clock position. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're just going by the observations that are being made by people all over the world and also our physicist. She's working very, very hard on a lot of these subjects and getting back to this report in conclusion, coronal holes seem to form due to the sun connecting magnetically to other stars. And this connection seems to be a factor in the sun having, having weakened substantially in the past few years. The coronal hole at the sun's south pole and the comet impact on March 4th, 2017 suggest that there may be a brown dwarf permanently positioned below the sun's south pole. Well, ladies and gentlemen, each and every day as time goes on and we continue to see these large scars opening up on the sun day after day. They're not stopping. Now, already I can see weakening this, this coronal hole right here. You can see it opening with your own eyes. Just by looking at this SDO 48 hour loop, I can already see the lightning of the sun's corona right over here, right there right there, all of this area. So once again, we're not able to actually see what is below or possibly below and behind the sun. But the bottom line is something is affecting the sun and something is causing the sun to lose its illumination. Therefore, that may be the big possibility for the institution of these sun simulators in our skies above. This is Scott from Planet X News and the Nibiru channel. Thank you for watching. And ladies and gentlemen, as I always say, stay updated, stay informed, and stay tuned. If any of you are interested in prepping supplies, emergency food and water, you can visit one of my associates, foodforliberty.com. Their link is in the description box under the video. Most importantly, make sure that you are subscribed to the Nibiru channel and Planet X News so you can stay updated and informed. And I would also like to thank you for watching and subscribing to our channel. He has submitted this report. The title of the report is Why Does the Sun Have So Many Coronal Holes? A Physicist's Thoughts, March 30th, 2017. Now it states in figure one below shows an illustration of a coronal hole and a plasma loop on the sun. The sun's magnetic field lines usually form loops close to the sun and the sun's plasma, which is made up of mostly ionized hydrogen with some other particles like ionized helium and even some ionized iron flow between these looping field lines, thus forming plasma loops. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen these plasma loops on the sun, they are absolutely spectacular. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to show you what these plasma loops look like. And this is going to be just some NASA footage. And this is from the SDO. I'm going to go ahead and play this for you so you can see some of the activity on the sun. Now, a lot of this activity is normal to our star. But let's take a look at these plasma loops. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel and Planet X News. Today we're going to be going over some information that was submitted by our physicist today. And the issue is the coronal holes on the sun. Now if you've been listening to my channel for some time, you know that I go into the information provided by the SDO pertaining to all of these coronal holes that have been appearing on our sun for more than 18 months now on a regular basis. I had a discussion with our physicist pertaining to the reasons why these coronal holes are constantly appearing on our sun. We've gone on and researched this information and she 0.5 million miles per hour. That is absolutely extreme. And we're going to go ahead and move further down here. And we're going to start talking about some of the magnetics and the magnetic field lines of the sun. Now it states that magnetic field lines always form a closed loop as shown in figure two below. So even though the magnetic field lines coming through a coronal hole are drawn as if they are open, they cannot really be open. They have to close and form a loop somewhere. The loop may close very far away from the sun, but it has to close somewhere. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're getting at here in this information, and I know some of this may be confusing to all of you, but what we're basically getting at is we're trying to make a connection between what is occurring on the sun, what is creating all of these coronal holes. When these coronal holes are opening up on the sun, it is creating the solar winds. When the solar winds impact the earth, and once again, these are not, I go ahead and blow this up for you because it is absolutely spectacular to watch. Now what you're seeing is what she is referring to in her report, these very large plasma loops as they extrude from the sun. Very spectacular to watch. Now there's a lot to understand pertaining to what is occurring on the sun. And as you can see, these are absolutely spectacular. Here you can see the earth to scale pertaining to the size of the sun and these plasma loops. Now we're going to go ahead and get directly back to the report. Now this is just showing you the rendition of the sun and normal solar winds formed by particles flowing from other regions in the sun's corona. Now basically what happens, the sun is interacting with another object. Therefore, these large coronal holes will start to open up. We're going to go ahead and move down here a little further. It states that figure one illustration of different particle fluxes coming off of the sun. When the field lines, well, let me blow this up. When the field lines make a loop, plasma flows between these magnetic field lines. 
thus forming a plasma loop, what we just watched in that video from NASA and the SDO. The particle flux from the coronal hole is caused by particles flowing along the magnetic field lines in the coronal hole. This particle flux is faster than the normal particle flux generated by the sun and gives rise to the fast solar wind. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I talk about this solar wind just about every single day now because our planet is being blasted continuously with these solar winds. As the report goes on here, it states that the solar winds which originate in coronal holes can have speeds of more than 750 kilometers per second or 1.7 million miles per hour. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last week we saw a coronal hole produce solar winds at 